Boys and girls, you may have seen something like this before where you're looking at a set of railroad tracks. And when you look at the width of those tracks and then look way off in the distance, you might say to yourself, oh, the railroad tracks are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, something that we need to be thinking about is if I was standing right there in the front and I walked all the way to the end, would I be the same size? Well, in real life, I would be. Would I look? the same size? Would I be way off there in the distance? Well, no. That would be scary for the village nearby. Really, I would look very tiny off into the distance. I would be this tiny little person. Did I shrink? No. A lot of you already have this figured out that you know that as things get for further away from the foreground, go from the middle ground, and go all the way to the background, it appears as if it is getting smaller and smaller. Now today we're gonna find out that in a picture like this, that's our horizon line, and where everything seems to be pointing, we are going to be calling that the vanishing point. Now our horizon line divides up the earth and the sky, and as I look at all the lines, I'm trying to figure out where is my vanishing point? Where does it seem like things in the picture are vanishing? And I'm finding that the vanishing point is right there. In fact, if I look at other things in this picture, I'm noticing that it looks like there's other things in here that are pointing towards the vanishing point. If I look at those fence posts over there, those are all going towards the vanishing point. If I look at the edges of the railroad tracks. Sure enough, they're going towards the vanishing point. Even this little path that's been worn down by maybe a truck that's been going past the railroad tracks, that is going towards the vanishing point. Well, our friend Claude Monet went to a place called Holland, and in Holland, they grow a flower called tulips. And this is what a tulip looks like when it's growing outside. And if you go to Publix, this is probably what you'll see them. The, the blooms are kind of closed up, all the petals, they haven't opened up yet. And if you buy them like that, they last a long time. And when Claude Monet went there, he saw all those tulips and the windmills and he thought to himself, oh yeah, I would like to paint that. Well, first he had to figure out the horizon line from what he was looking at. So he stood there looking at those tulips and said, okay, if I'm gonna paint this, I need to figure this thing out. So the first thing he did was the horizon line, and he drew a line straight across his paper. The next thing he had to say to himself is, it looks like from where I'm standing that the rows are getting smaller and smaller towards that windmill way out there. So he said, you know what? I'll bet you that windmill is my vanishing point. And sure enough, as he started to draw it out on the paper, every time he drew a line that would go towards that windmill, he said, you know what? That is my vanishing point. Now, let's look at a different real life picture. Claude Monet was standing out there looking at this field. And he said, okay, how am I gonna draw this thing? Well, he had to first find his horizon line. Let's see if he can find it, sure enough. And the next thing he had to do was to figure out his vanishing point. So, he drew his horizon line, and I want for you to think, is the vanishing point at that green dot, or is it by that yellow dot? If you are thinking it is the green dot, you have a lot of people who agree with you. And the reason that they think that the green dot is the vanishing point is because they see the windmill sitting over there and they think, well, the windmill is where the vanishing point needs to be. Actually, that is not true. Sometimes the windmill is on the vanishing point. But when we're trying to figure out our vanishing point, what we need to decide is, where does it seem like everything is pointing? And if you look at where I put that yellow dot, 
you'll see that all of the rows appear to be going off into the distance to that point. Let's look at another picture. This time you're gonna to have to decide, is the vanishing point by the windmill? Is it not by the windmill? Is it going in a different direction? Well, we're first gonna draw our horizon line and then we're not gonna worry about Mr. Windmill. We're gonna be going, oh, where's everything? Is it going towards that black dot? No, that would be weird. It's going right towards the windmill. Now we're gonna look at one more and try and check it out and then we're gonna do this in real life. So here I have my windmill. Is the windmill where the vanishing point is? <laughs> Here's my horizon line. My windmill is off to the side and that's okay. But is that where my vanishing point is going towards? Are all the rows of the tulips heading towards that? Actually, they're heading towards that cute, adorable little house. So if that's what you said, there's my the, the house, that blue dot. We see that all the rows are going towards that. Now, boys and girls, when Claude Monet went to Holland, he saw the windmills and the water and the tulips and the boats that he loved to paint and he decided that he was gonna spring into action and go en plein air, work outside, and he was going to paint what he saw. He had his palette of paints, he had his canvas, he had his easel, he had some bug spray, if they, that existed back then, and he set off to work. Now when you sit down, you're gonna see some idea sheets and you're gonna have options. The first option you might wanna go with is having your horizon line kind of high and on this one, I have the vanishing point off to the right-hand side of my paper. And I drew all my lines, starting from the vanishing point and going out. Now I'm drawing a windmill, and I'm not, on this one, putting it on my vanishing point. And I will have that little um, diagram there to help you. You'll notice I even put some tiny ones, windmills, to make it look like they're off in the distance. Another option would be to have your horizon line smack dab down the middle and to have your vanishing point on the left-hand side. Notice I start at the vanishing point and I go out. And this time I decided to put my windmill right on my vanishing point and I even went ahead and planned out some clouds. Here I have a low horizon line and I put my vanishing point right in the middle. Notice I'm going from the vanishing point and going out to draw each line. I'm never starting from the edge of the paper and trying to find my vanishing point. Now once you're done, you're gonna put your crayon back in the table organizer. Remember that your badges will eventually go back in the big section. You're gonna pick up your brush and remember the last time we did this, we would dip our brush into two colors. Now I'm using yellow and I'm dipping it into a little bit of white. And notice that I'm doing dabby, 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 because I'm creating a texture that hopefully someone will believe are tulips. Now notice when I get back towards my vanishing point, I need to be a little bit more careful. Now on my color wheel, orange is next to yellow and green is next to yellow, yellow. You'll notice that Claude Monet, if he had yellow on his brush, he would go straight into the orange at the same time and let it mix right there on the canvas. So you may have noticed that I took my yellow painty brush, dipped it into the orange, and now I'm doing dabby, 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 dabby to fill up that space. Now, because I have some light orange on my brush, I'm gonna dip it straight into dark orange and I'm letting it mix right there on my canvas. Notice that my ballerina is almost doing this jump up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and creating a texture that's different than if I was doing my sky. Now I notice that next to orange is red. So I dipped into the red and you're gonna see again that I've got some mixing of color going on. I even dipped into the white. And I'm. Uh, if you wanna go back into the red and add some, you're gonna have a lot of fun seeing how the colors mix right on here. Now you don't have to start with yellow and you don't have to do warm colors. You can do whatever you want. 
But just for this example, I'm just showing you that I'm working my way across the color wheel. And I just actually put it into some purple and I'm letting that mix on the canvas. How cool is that? Oh, do I love that. Now, if you start to feel a little bit tired from doing dabby dabby, you can begin to work on your sky. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that there is a beautiful sunset sky in that picture. When, if you're wanting to just move and do the sky so it's not so dabby dabby, you can go up into your sky and this time you're just kind of going back and forth, back and forth, just like we learned to do with the feathers. Your ballerina brush is capable of making so many different textures on your canvas. And in this case, it's not dabby dabby, it's just side to side. Now in my example here, I'm using blue, which is kind of typical, but you can have fun like the pictures I had shown you and seeing different sunset skies. In just a moment, you're going to begin to draw your horizon line and um, your vanishing point, and then you're gonna be drawing a windmill. I'm gonna be leaving the windmill up here so that you can see it. Have fun.